take a hard bite. Mm -hmm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa. You know, Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it puts. Watch Donnie's bite. <laughs> Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Hezbollah, Wanim al Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And here, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Tuesday, the 29th of October. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. And thank you very much indeed for spending your morning with us every day of the uh, working week. Thank you so much indeed to all those who also share their thoughts and comments on our platform on 3FM 92.7 and join the conversations. Thank you so much to all who share the link. Thanks to all who uh, also tell others about us. We're very much grateful. We're just uh, 39 days to the big election on, 20, on December 7, 2024. And I hope that the issues are informing your decision. I hope that it's not just party coloration that is pushing you to take a decision. I hope you have Ghana on your mind. And I pray that your focus will not just be about um, you know, what you can get immediately, but what is there for the very, very long term. This morning, the, there's a lot on our table, and I am beginning to ask myself a few questions, particularly why a lot of issues are happening, and it looks as, okay, everybody is okay. Everybody is, is sitting still, and everybody is sitting pretty and quiet. I ask myself, why? I always have asked that question, but... Yesterday, it hit me as I decided to put the, the materials together. I started asking myself, why? So this morning, I've, I've been thinking about Boku. The front page of the Ghanaian Times says 20 people died in Boku or have died so far in Boku. And I asked myself, are we not able with all the security apparatus, with all the intelligence that we have, with all the... Um, money that we have dedicated to this whole Boku thing, are we not able to fix it once and for all? Maybe it's not that easy. But for four years, think about it. For four years, my brothers and sisters from the north, who traditionally wear smoke on a daily basis, and for big events and ceremonies and all of that, and for, for everybody, they can't wear their smock for four years. For four years, the people in Boku, and you know the easiest means of transportation in Boku is a motorbike in many parts of the north. For four years, young men and young women cannot ride their motorbikes. For four years, young men, the, the, the young men particularly, they are the ones I'm worried about, the young men for four years. So how do they transport themselves? If it's a means of trying to earn a living by doing Okada business, how have they survived for four years? For four years, there's been a curfew in Boku, and every time we keep asking for a budget to add on to make sure that the people are kept in, you know, that curfew for four years. Four years. We were in this country. They kept us under partial lockdown in Accra, Kumasi, uh, Kaswa and Tema. It was not the whole country. Accra, Kumasi, Tema, and Kaswa. Three weeks only. We were all complaining. That is too much. We were all complaining that is too much. Even that essential service workers could go out and come back. But we said it was too much. For four years, they have been on the curfew. And for four years, they have to sleep before 6 p.m. What crime did they commit? What crime really did they commit? And those who are fomenting the trouble, can't we fish them out and, and nip this in the bud for once and for all? And each time it comes up, you hear gunfire. Hear, where do they get the guns from? Is there no intelligence on the ground? 
So those who have been transferred there to go and work. I had a police friend who was transferred there. He's been transferred down to Accra. But while he was there, he was on a daily basis bombarding me with situational reports. And I felt for him. He was a policeman trained to defend himself, trained to protect other people, trained to handle weapons and all of that. But even he was scared. Now think about that nurse. Think about that teacher. Think about that doctor. Think about that roads engineer. Think about that Netco staff. Think about that Ghana Water staff. Think about that GRA staff. Think about them. Those who don't originally come from the place, they don't know anything about any conflict. They don't know anything. And for four years, four years of their lives, and everybody is okay, we are watching. We will take ballot boxes to Boko and let them vote. We will go to Boko and go and campaign for power. Yeah, we'll, we'll take ballot boxes to Boku. Where you think they will be excluded? They will not be excluded. We will take ballot boxes to Boku for them to vote. In 39 days, we will do that. We will go there and go and preach to them about, uh, what do you call it, bold solutions. We'll go and preach to them about 24 economy. We'll go and preach to them about all the things that we, we digitalization, whatever it is. We'll go and talk to them. How have we made the people in Boku happy? How have we done that as a country? Today, I want you to think about it, that if you were kept in under curfew for four years of your life, how would you feel? Can you survive it? The women, the children, the unending deaths. How? How, how, how? And every time we go to parliament, we we'll ask for some more money, and then we'll take it there and go and slap. So I get, I'm tempted to think that somebody is profiteering off this whole thing. That's why we don't want to stop it. Maybe somebody is profiteering. That's why we don't want to stop it. Because it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't add up to me at all. It doesn't add up to me at all. Chama, take me to Parliament. Parliament is indefinitely uh, suspended. The Speaker of Parliament had to take that decision because the minority and the majority were at each other's throats because four of their members had decided that they were going to run independent. And some, some were running also who were independent and now coming to run on party tickets. And the Speaker said, no, no, no. Somebody said, declare the seats vacant. Hiron Idrisu makes the application and then da, 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 da. Well, the Speaker of Parliament has spoken. And in speaking, he speaks through an official of the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. There's a memo I'll read to you where there's a writ that was served on him. He says, ah, German, return to sender, back to sender. It's dated the 18th of October, 2024. The Registrar, Supreme Court, Accra. Dear Registrar, re, read to take, uh, to invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court pursuant to Articles 1, uh, 12, uh, Articles 1, 12, 1, and 2, 17, 1, 21, 1, BE, 35, 1, and 5, 55, 97, 1, G, uh, 130A, 296A, and B of the 1992 Constitution of, and Rule 45 of the Supreme Court Rules 1996, CI 16. I am directed by the Right Honorable Alban Sumana Kisford Bagbin, Speaker of Parliament, to return the attached processes which was left at the legal office, legal services office of the parliamentary service by three bailiffs of the court on Wednesday, 16th October 2024. Attempts were made to serve the same processes on Tuesday, 15th October 2024. The Right Honorable Speaker notes that the attempted service is contrary to Article 117 of the 1992 Constitution and the secular issued by Her Ladyship Justice Syrah. Pamela C.A. Curranting, Justice of the Appeal Court, the Judicial Secretary, and copy to the Honorable Lady Chief Justice with reference number CSCR 9, entitled Enforcement of Article 117 and 118 of the Constitution, uh, Immunity uh, from Service of Process and Arrest, dated 12 July 2024, addressed to all registrars of all courts. Consequently, the Right Honorable Speaker has directed return of the attached processes for your necessary action. Kindly accept my highest regards. Ebenezer Ahuma uh, Jitron is the deputy clerk to Parliament and carbon copy to the Right Honorable Speaker. So the Speaker says, uh, whatever it is that you think that you are serving me, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking it. Please take it back. 
Now, it takes me to the point. This back and forth. You know, Galamse is a big issue. Boku is a big issue. Apiati is a big issue. The uh, Akosobo Dam spillage is a big issue. Keta Sea Defense Wall is a big issue. Um, you have, um, you know, uh, schools posting is a big issue. It, it, lo lots and lots of big issues. And you ask yourself, where is our Council of State? Somebody asked me that yesterday. And I said, okay, let me tell you what the Council of State does according to the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. Because when there is confusion, the elders in the home, in this case, will be the Council of State. The elders in the home, they are the ones who say, no, this is not how it's supposed to be done. This is the way it's supposed to be done. And the Council of State is properly put together and properly selected. Some are elected. But the president deems it that, ah, you, because of your experience in whatever, come and, and advise me. So when you have all the creme de la creme, the best of the best, the primos in the Paris of, of, in their various will come together. And then they form the Council of State. And you have all this confusion going around, and you don't hear from the Council of State. There's a problem. Because for every major function that, this, that happens in this country, you find the chairman of the Council of State present. And wearing a nice kid thing. You, oh, yeah, yes, you chairman of the Council of State. Now, what is the Council of State? Article 89 of the 1992 Constitution makes provision for the Council of State. It says, there shall be a Council of State to counsel the president in the performance of his functions. They to advise the president in the performance of his function. The Council of State shall consist of the following. A, the following persons appointed by the president in consultation with parliament. One person who has previously held the office of chief justice. One person who has previously held the office of the chief of defense staff of the armed forces of Ghana. One person who has previously held the office of inspector general of police. The president of the national house of chiefs. I'm giving you the composition of the Council of State. So you know that there are no small, small boys and small, small girls. One representative from each region of Ghana elected in accordance with regulations made by the Electoral Commission under Article 51 of this constitution by an electoral college comprising two representatives from each of the districts in the region nominated by the district assemblies in the region and... Flip the next page for me. People are nominated and they have to be there. So, former CJ, former CDS, former IGP, uh, former pre pre president, of the, president of the National House of Chiefs, they all are part of the, nation, the Council of State. There's another layer. Now, the Council of State shall consider and advise the president or any other authority in respect of any appointment which is required by this constitution or any other law to be made in accordance with the advice of or in consultation with the Council of State. The advice referred to in clause 1 of this article shall be given not later than 30 days after the receipt of the request from the president or other authority. The Council of State may, upon request or on its own initiative, consider and make recommendations or any matter being considered or dealt with by the President, a Minister of State, Parliament, or any other authority established by this Constitution, except that the President, Minister of State, Parliament, or any other authority shall not be required to act in accordance with any recommendation made by the Council of State under the clause. So that they can advise, but the advice will not be taken. But the question is, have they advised? Next page, please. Now, there's, there's, there, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this to you so you get a clear understanding of the Council of State. And the Council of State are giving allowances at the end of every month. The Council of State will get ex gratia when they finish their work. Now, the Council of State shall meet for the dispatch of business at least four times in a year at such time and place as the chairman may determine. The Council of State shall also meet if requested by A, the President, or B, Parliament, or C, not less than five members of the Council. Three, the Council of State shall hold its meetings in camera, but may admit the public to any meetings whenever it considers it appropriate. Four, the Chairman of the Council of State shall, be, shall preside at every meeting of the Council, and in absence, uh, a member of the Council of State elected 
by the members of the council shall preside. A question for decision by the Council of State shall not be proposed for determination unless there are present in the council more than one half of all the members of the council, except as otherwise provided in the constitution, etc. Now, if the chief or the king has advices and it appears that everything is going haywire, do you not expect the elders to at least show that we have given the chief advice? And that, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm too young to understand how these things work. But where is our Council of State in all of this confusion? from Boko to um, the Volta region, Kosovo Dam spillage, to Apiati, to the recent one that happened in, in Central region. Where is our Council of State? Where is our Council of State? We are supposed to see the elders. When you go to any village, you see the elders. The elders command a lot of respect and authority. Where is our own Council of State? Where are they? Our own council of state, where are they? Look, find me the finance minister's vi vi uh, video. Our finance minister, and you know, there's one thing I've realized about this government. The government literally shuns local media. And the local media is comprised of people who pay taxes in Ghana, whose taxes actually take care of the government officials, who shun them. And they go out there and speak to foreign media. The president does it. The vice president does it. They pick and choose. Please play the finance minister's video for me. He was speaking about the domestic debt exchange program. Listen to him. Part of our arrangement with the part of our arrangement with the IMF, we decided to restructure our debts to bring our debts to sustainable uh, levels. We started with our domestic debt uh, restructuring and the sacrifices of our people. Uh, ensure that we concluded uh, that restructuring with about 95% uh, or more participation. So it was greatly a success. Uh, we followed that with the restructuring of our bilateral uh, debt with our bilateral creditors. That was also very successful in a negotiation between us and the official creditor committee for Ghana. And this led to a significant savings, debt service relief of about 2.8 billion US dollars. And then following this is our restructuring of the euro bonds. The euro bonds, about 13 billion uh, US dollars. Uh, that was concluded in the first week of this month. Uh, another great success because we saw over 98% participation in the debt exchange. Um, the benefits we have derived from this so far includes an outright debt cancellation of about $5 billion and another debt service relief of about $4.3 billion. And so between the bilateral creditors and the euro bonds, you are talking about savings of about $12 billion US dollars. So we think this is a very great success. We are still having an outstanding uh, restructuring with our commercial creditors involving about $2.7 billion. We are working very hard to conclude that. So, so far, uh, I can say that we, we have been pretty successful uh, at our restructuring. The participation has been great, and we see ourselves uh, moving on the path to debt sustainability. So, this is our finance minister. He says, oh, the domestic debt exchange program, the restructuring has been very successful. Who defines what is successful? Is the finance minister aware of the pain that people go through? There's a, there's a screenshot of uh, my good friend, Philip Ataura. Philip Ataura is a trainer of journalists. Philip Ataura had a kidney issue, and this is public knowledge. And some of us had to join our voices because we knew Philip to do crowdfunding for Philip to be able to get a transplant. Philip had some money, but Philip couldn't assess his own money because of this domestic debt exchange program that the finance minister now says it was very successful. He says, you are crying because of six months. And somebody goes there, my um, our, our colleague here, Dennis Pobberry, Esquire. He goes to, to Data Bank to go and say, oh, give us our money, our investment. He said, you have to wait for six months before you get the money to fix an emergency that Dennis and his friends say they want to fix. Then Philip comes under the portals. You are crying because of six months. I wanted to withdraw from my M fund to support my kidney transplant in February 2023. 
I am still waiting for that money as I type. I stopped contributing to the fund and now waiting for only God knows when. Let it stay on the screen. Let's read it again. You are crying because of six months. I wanted to withdraw from my M fund to support my kidney transplant in February 2023. Which month is this? October 2024. How many months after that? I am still waiting for that money as I type. I stopped contributing to the fund and now waiting for only God knows when. The finance minister says, we're successful. The council of state is quiet. If I, dare I say, and all apologies to my good friend Philip, and Noel, Nuchuga, and the rest, they were all instrumental in, in getting this done. If that crowdfunding had not been successful, the worst could have happened to our good friend Philip Ataura. Now, Philip Ataura is maybe fortunate because there are those who know him who are also influential. What about those who do not know any influential people? Come to me. What about those who don't know any influential people? What about those who have no voice? What about those? And I keep telling you that people who have passports, who can take their passports and travel out of the country and go and seek medical care, when they start talking and they tell you everything is successful, watch them with two eyes open widely. Widely, widely open. He says that the thing was, is successful. People are still in pain. So if that crowdfunding had not happened, the man needed his money, his own money that he had put set aside for a rainy day in February 2023. We will go. I want this to sink in. There's a one, one last letter that we'll read and then we will go. February 2023. What has our Council of State said about any of the debt exchange, domestic debt exchange? Program? There's a green letter from the presidency. What has our Council of State st said about all of that? What is happening? What has our Council of State said about it? That the former Chief Justice of the Republic went on the streets asking for her money. What has the Council of State said about it? A former Director General of the Securities and Exchange Co Commission. What has the Council of State said about it? other senior citizens and you heard a medical doctor says I, I am a doctor i know what is happening to me my money is there they're not giving me money and i know that the more i delay the more complications i get what has the council of state said about it the council of state is supposed to advise the government and advise the president and to ensure that the assigns of the president like the finance minister doesn't go talking sweet out there while the people suffer here is the more reason they do not speak to us because they know when they speak to us here locally, we know the issues and we will ask them the right questions so they will never sit before us. Read this, 20th October, 2022. We're wrapping up with this. I've been talking about state institutions. I've been talking about Gihok. I've been talking about, um, what do you call it? Alegiba. I've been talking about so many state institutions and how the top executives are misbehaving. This is what the chief of staff wrote. And you know why? This letter, is, it, it gives me the shock that why Dr. Bonaventure Benedict Aligeban, for example, doesn't want to leave. And after the chief of staff had written, he says, I don't care. We can do your worst. The chief of staff wrote this letter. He says, guidelines on government response system to address issues in the public domain. Cabinet. This is a cabinet decision. The same cabinet decision like was taking the Galamse issue where they say stop all forms of mining. And people say, Pia, we will give you license to go and mine in 47 forest reserves. The same cabinet met and said at this last meeting held on 6 October 2022, discussed the need to establish a government response system to address various issues in the public domain, particularly in respect of attempts to distort issues or misinform the public. Subsequent to the discussion, the president has issued the following guidelines to assist in the timeliest response to matters in the public domain. All government appointees, including ministers of, uh, and chief executive officers, should provide uh, comprehensive responses to allegations made in the public domain within 12 hours of the allegation being brought to their attention. 12 hours. 12 hours. The government appointee concerned should work with the Minister of Information to disseminate the response. How many months have I spoken about Georg? 
How many months have I spoken about Alegeba? Has he even bothered to cough? Kofi Juma, has he bothered to cough? Government institutions should patronize our media assets across the country. The Minister of Foreign Information is working with the Minister for Communication and Digitalization to come up with a list and program and will share it with the government appointees. It didn't happen. All government appointees, including ministers and chief executive officers, should make themselves available for deployment on radio and television shows to speak generally about the government's activities and particularly activities concerning their ministries and institutions. They do meet the press. They won't come to you. All government appointees, including the ministers and chief executive officers, should have an active social media presence. Hmm? Those who are not present on social media should contact the Minister for Information to assist in setting up social media accounts. These accounts should, let's go to the next page, promote government activities as well as the activities of the institutions to enable them to respond timely to issues. Hmm? All government appointees, including ministers and chief executive officers, are hereby directed to note and comply with the above instructions. Honorable Akosia Frima Osei Opare is chief of staff. It was to all ministers, all political appointees, secretary to the president, Nana Santi Bidetu, who is now receiving medical care outside, was copied. Secretary to the vice president was copied. Minister for Information, then Kojo Oponkroma, was copied. Presidential staff, uh, advisor, media and strategic communication. All of these people were copied. This was a directive of cabinet that was put out there in the public domain by no less a person than the chief of staff. Ask yourself, which state institution, which government appointee, which minister has abided by this cabinet decision? The people who live in the government and enjoy from the government and appointees of the government do not respect the government. How do you expect the people to respect the government? The people who benefit from the government who use the sirens, who are the big boys and the big boys, come to me. Who enjoy the, the things of government and call themselves honorable, honorable. They insist that you should call me honorable, honorable. They don't even respect their own government and their own cabinet. How do you expect me, you and I, to respect the government? Leadership is by example. How do you expect you and I to respect the government? The government doesn't respect itself. By this letter, 12 hours. So many, I say, who show me who has complied with this? 12 hours, show me. 12 hours was the timeline. Show me who has complied with it. The government doesn't respect itself. The government doesn't respect itself. Why should anybody respect the government? It's a question. 055 924 2717 and 055 691 051. 055 924 2717 and 055 691 0154. Please call me after this break. Have a good morning.